one thing I wanted to start doing as part of the van tour series was going through some of my loadouts. This is my soldering kit. This is the M12 made by Milwaukee. And uh, here's the soldering iron right here. You can adjust the angle, which I don't use much. Um, I do keep a hose on it. Sometimes I put it back before it's fully cooled. But the nice thing is it takes just standard HACO tips. And this element is a HACO. So you're getting a really nice element. Heats up really fast. Uh, the temperature control is not the greatest if you're not going to do a bunch of joints at a time. I normally cut it off between joints. As long as it's in contact with something, it doesn't tend to overheat. But if, like I said, if you know if you're taking a break, it it, it does tend to overheat. Um, so you can you can get Haco tips for it. Any kind of off-brand Haco tip. Here's a bunch of them, and you want various tips. I, I'm gonna try to go through tips and tricks as well as I'm going through all this stuff. So for board work, you want a small tip like this you know for doing thick wires and things big capacitors on a board you want a bigger tip because you got to have enough of a, a heat i guess a reservoir there for heat otherwise the component draws away so much heat here's a cup tip this is for like repairing traces and doing different things but that that holds quite a bit of solder so that can be nice for doing thick wires but anyways um, you always want to keep extra tips and different styles with you. Let me go over this actually next, since this right here, since I'm going to be piling stuff over here. This is a super cheap, <laughs> super cheap desoldering kit. It's just stainless steel pins. I think I paid like a dollar fifty for this on eBay. <laughs> straight from China, lost one there. Um, but anyways, you look and see what size lead your component is. And I actually have a video where I'm using this. Um, check the description for that link. But when you melt the solder, you're just gonna take this pin and goes another one. You're just gonna take this pin and work it up over the lead. And because it's stainless steel, solder won't stick to it. So then you can twist it and pull it out, do both sides, and then you can pull that through through hole component right off the board. I uh, prefer my Haco when I'm in my shop desoldering stuff, but this is great for in the field. Okay, back to the main kit. Keep lots of heat shrink. Now, the only heat shrink that I use in the field is marine grade or adhesive lined heat shrink. Uh, it's a much thicker insulation, especially once it shrinks and that adhesive dries. Uh, sometimes it's even thicker than the OEM wire insulation, but mostly you're going to you're going to be using this size right here. I guess that's millimeters. I don't know, but but I keep some larger sizes, you know, if I'm, if I'm want to heat, like, let's say I've got uh, two wires in a pair and I got to repair them. I'll heat shrink them individually and sometimes throw this thicker stuff on top to protect it. Okay. For solder, these are the two sizes that I like the most. And you always, always want, uh, lead. Don't ever buy non-lead solder for electronics and wire repairs. You, ju you just can't beat the performance of lead solder. But these are the two sizes that I prefer. This one's gonna be better for wires and things, and this one here is better for boards. And you want um, like a rosin core. With electronics, it's very important that you're flux not stay active so if you try to use plumbing flux on a board that board will corrode you got to have rosin core for doing wires and boards and things there's some more liquid rosin flux i found the best thing for that uh, which my daughter uh, graciously donated <laughs> this is a, a fingernail polish bottle works great for applying that liquid flux a lot of times i just pop that little guy right in here and that holds 
use it. This is another type of rosin flux. It's just non-liquid. Non it can be great for bigger wires and things. And it will sort of melt in there as soon as you get, get it hot. And um, one advantage to that style too, which I suppose you could do that way, but it's mainly best for, is you can just take your wires and just dip them in there. This set from Crescent is by far one of my favorite soldering sets. It comes with a flush cutter, which I don't have in here, but uh, these needle nose are great for electronics repair. Here, here's a flush cutter, it's just not the Crescent one. I keep any of my sharp stuff I keep uh, tubing over, it keeps it from cutting up stuff and keeps you poking your fingers. But uh, you know, a lot of the cheap flush cutters on Amazon work just fine. But if you look, you'll see that one jaw slightly, if I can get that in focus, overlaps the other one. And what this does is it gives you a nice square cut. This is not like diagonal cutters that pinch cut and you end up with like a little knife blade at the end of your wire. This is going to be a nice straight cut. See that? Uh, great for cutting zip ties, makes them non-sharp and electronics leads. Uh, electronics lead. Electronic component leads. Um, great for cutting those and obviously this point is really nice for getting into tight areas these are so handy i mean you should own a pair of these whether you do electronics work or not when you're soldering it's really important to keep the tip of the soldering iron clean and this is by far my favorite method brass wool in fact here's a tip in here this is one i use a lot this is a big chisel tip and that's great for doing heavy work but this this carbon will start to build up here and that insulates the solder and the heat from the component so you have to dip it in here and knock that off i found that these are better than like the wet sponge the, the wet sponge is kind of hard on the nickel coating and once that nickel coating's gone this the tip will just erode but uh this is just a the reason i have it in a container is because i don't want lead you know little flakes everywhere just hot glued that down in there but this thing works great uh seam ripper this is a little sewing tool but it's great if you have a harness i don't use this as much but when i did generators uh comes in handy you know you have like that little plastic sheath that goes over wires you can take this up in here and just gut it back so you can get your wires out it's really great for not nicking a wire Lighter, of course, for the heat shrink. Uh, silicone grease. This is great for keeping corrosion out of uh, connectors and things. We have some de-pinning tools in here. This is a generic one for different styles. But this one here is my favorite. I've got a few... You know, what's weird is, you know, Molex is not a standard. So different manufacturers make different sizes of Molex connectors. You just never know what you're getting into. Those look different, but or they look the same, but they're not. This one will fit in some that the other one won't, vice versa. But you stick that, you know, down into your mail pin and just pop it right out of the connector. These work great, but I do recommend keeping a few different ones. Like here's a, here's another one that's a little thinner. This is my favorite pair of wire strippers by far. I normally grind the wheel off of that. It, it's like a, the wheel's like a gauge for a wire gate. That does nothing but get in the way. Just take that right off here. But this works great for several reasons. One is it's like a shear cut. So if you snip a wire like this, it doesn't deform the insulation. Sometimes it doesn't matter, but sometimes it does. If you're doing like an electronics project and you need to get a wire through an exact hole, this works great. Like little ethernet wires, any wire that you need the end to be nice and neat on, these are great. Uh, great for stripping, obviously. You can kind of feel when it cuts through the insulation. And then you 
break the insulation away. You're not really trying to get right up against the copper. You're just trying to cut the majority of the insulation and then you break it like that with your thumb. Uh, super good for cutting zip ties. Let's say like this, let's say these are all wires. Really nice to get in there and cut that zip tie because these hooked jaws will keep you from nicking wires. You can do that all day and not nick a wire. What else do I got? Okay, this is something I made. Lyle sells one as well. Um, and this is just a little helping hand for doing wire joints. So I'd stick that on the side of a unit, put my wire in there, and it'll hold the ends together as you're soldering. But whether you make one or you uh, buy one, I would recommend that you put heat shrink on these jaws. And the reason for that is when you're heating up a wire, that heat flows downstream and it makes that insulation soft. And if these teeth are sharp, they'll punch right through that soft insulation, especially on heavy gauge wire when you really have to get it hot. What else do I got in here? A little bit of sand cloth. I find these little PVC containers work great for little small stuff. Uh, butane torch works a little better on heat shrink, but those are a little finicky sometimes. That's why I keep a backup. Uh, jeweler's loop. You definitely want something. I, I like a times 10, but you got to be able to get in there and look at solder joints to see if they're cracked. Um, especially with the modern boards and how small the components are, you just can't see it with your naked eye. You really got to have something to look closely at um, your connectors. This I use for making custom multimeter leads. I won't go into that. Uh, this little pair of scissors I like for cutting away, similar to the seam ripper, uh, for cutting up a wiring harness. This is a D-pin tool for Generac connectors. They, they, they use these little, little teeny Molex style. Here's another Molex. Like, like I said, you have to have multiple because Molex is not, it's almost like Sawzall. It's, it's a word that's become associated with a type of connector, but it's not a standard. You know, it's one of those words. This one sometimes will get stuff that none of those three will. Looks like that's another tip. I keep some spare uh, four millimeter banana. These are by far my favorite. This, this one, this. These, these beat the socks off of the banana connectors that are like a cage. If you look down in your multimeter leads, uh, you'll see what I'm talking about. But the, um, the interference fit is created by this little like wire cage and those are not as anywhere near as reliable as these. I love the, the, this connector. I'll try to put some links to some of this odd stuff in the uh, description. Okay, what else do I got here? The thimble. This is for if you've got a wire that you need to pierce. It's maybe a little non-standard size and your piercing probes just can't quite get on it. I'll put this on my finger and use a T-pin to get through it. And uh, it just protects your finger. Oh, a few other random. That's just some junk in there. All right. Well, I think that's it. But... Hopefully that was helpful, a few tips and tricks along with some things that uh, can be useful when you're doing uh, kind of intricate board repairs and wiring repairs out in the field.